Knicks family, what's poppin'? It's your boy. I wasn't able to get on the stream last night. I apologize for that. I was traveling. I was on the road. But I did get a chance to watch the game. And I want to talk about three reasons we lost. Then I'm going to talk about keys to the game against the Boston Celtics. Number one, we let the Brooklyn Nets get out to an early lead. The same way we did against the San Antonio Spurs. I understand that we fought back. We did a great job fighting back. But you can't expect to beat a team when you let them get out to a double-digit lead. It's tough, especially when you're a team like us that's just coming together with nine new players. And we don't really have an offensive uh, system or any kind of offensive continuity going. And we're making it tough on ourselves. I understand that we fought back and we took the lead in both games. But coming down the stretch, we maybe we had the energy, but we just didn't have, well, I'll talk about what we didn't have. Again, we got to play them even from the beginning. Make our runs. See if we can have enough to win the game in the end. Stop giving teams a double-digit lead. Number two, we had too many costly turnovers and missed opportunities. Missed layups right at the rim. We turned the ball over uh, down the stretch when we could have sealed the deal. 26 turnovers on the night, 17 assists. That's not going to get it done. You can't have more turnovers than you have assists and expect to win. Now, the Nets did the same thing, but we're not worried about the Nets. The Nets also had 26 turnovers. We're not worried about the Nets. We're worried about the Knicks. All right, 26 turnovers, 17 assists. That's not going to get it. And then number three, they had a closer in Kyrie. We didn't have a closer. Julius Randle didn't get it. Marcus Morris, he didn't get it. Wayne Ellington, he didn't get it. But you know what? We did have a guy on the bench that maybe could have closed the game for us. Lonzo Troy had 22 points. He's our best scorer off the dribble. He can get to the cup. He can pull it up mid-range. He should have been in the game. I understand that Wayne Ellington knocked down a couple of threes and actually gave us the lead. But then he clanked it off the backboard. He traveled. Trier should have been in the game. He's our best guy that can score off the dribble. You got to have him in there. He was our leading scorer on the night. Got to have him in there. So I question that move by Fisdale because Trier should have been in the game, in my opinion. Correct me if I'm wrong, ladies and gentlemen but I believe that Trey should have been in the game. I'm not saying he would have won it for us, but he would have gave us a chance. Now let's talk about keys to beating the Boston Celtics. Number one, we can't let the Celtics get out to a crazy lead. We can't let them get out to a double-digit lead. If we do that, it's done. The Celtics play a stingy type of defense. We let them get out to a double-digit lead, it's going to be hard to get back. And you don't want to do that at home, all right? You want to have the strength down the stretch so that we can have closers. So Julius Randle can close. So Marcus Morris can close. And, yes, so Alonzo Trier can close. We got to deal with Kemba Walker. Listen, I think we got to use the same strategies that we used against Kyrie Irving against Kemba Walker tonight. Deny him the ball off the inbounds. Trap him when you can and get the ball out of his hands. All right? Kemba Walker's not Kyrie Irving, but he's another tough guard that we got to deal with, so we got to defend that. We don't want him to get off in the garden. All right? We got to rebound the basketball. Last night we had 39 rebounds. That's not going to get it. The Celtics can rebound the ball and they can get out in transition. All right? We don't want these guys running on us. Finish the defense with a rebound. That's how you finish the defense. We got to finish the defense with a rebound. Then we got to take care of the ball. We can't have 26 turnovers and expect to win the game. All right? You can't, you can't have it. Can't have 26 turnovers and 17 assists. We got to find a way to get some offensive rhythm, some offensive continuity. 
we can get some offensive rhythm and offensive continuity, we give ourselves a chance in the fourth quarter. See, in the fourth quarter, when teams pick up their defense and they get a little bit more stingy and they're holding and they're grabbing, we do not have the offensive principles yet to withstand it. And we melt down to one-on-one -on -one play, which is why Trey should have been in the game. We don't want to uh, exacerbate. I don't even know if I used the right word. Uh, but, you know, we don't want to promote the one-on-one -on -one play. But at the moment, <laughs> Troyer is our best guy off the dribble. He should have been in there. I can't stress it enough. But we got to get our offensive system together so that uh, uh, we are able to handle these tough defenses down the stretch of the game. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be at the home opener tonight uh, with my crew. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking forward to it. And I will see you guys later on tonight. I'll be on live, man, so I'll catch you. I'm out.